Howdy folks, Brett here with another tutorial. Windows 11 offers a variety of built-in accessibility features designed to assist individuals who may find it challenging to use a computer. Coming up, I'll show you the features and tools that can not only help those with specific needs, but can also enhance anyone's overall experience using Windows 11. Let's get started. Being able to change the size and color of the mouse pointer can make it a lot easier to see it on your screen and can be fun as well. To do this, open the Settings app, right click on the Start button in the taskbar to bring up the Power User menu and select Settings. You can also open the Settings app with the keyboard shortcut, which is the Windows key plus I key. In the left pane, third from the bottom, click on Accessibility. Then select, third from the top, mouse pointer and touch. If not open, go into mouse pointer style. Your choices are white, black, inverted, which I do not like, and custom. This will show you recommended colors to choose. The screen recording software I use does not capture this very well. So this will look better without extra artifacts when you do this on your computer. You can select another color by clicking on the plus. You can also change the size of the pointer by moving the slider. Below that, you may need to scroll down. Let's turn on mouse indicator. This will make it easier to find your mouse pointer, whether it's white, black, inverted, or you have a custom color, by pressing the control key on your keyboard. We'll be staying in the accessibility settings for the remainder of these and start each segment on the accessibility homepage. For this next one, select text cursor and turn on text cursor indicator. When dealing with a ton of text, it makes your cursor stand out more easily. You can adjust the size with the slider and you'll see a preview up here. I found generally keeping it on two works well. And just like our last segment, you can choose a color. Staying in vision, let's go to narrator. Narrator is a cool screen reading tool that not only reads text, but will also describe elements like videos, photos, and other stuff that you would normally see if you weren't visually impaired. Instead of turning it on here at the top, enable the keyboard shortcut for narrator. So you don't have to keep coming back to settings to turn it on or off. And it shows you the keyboard shortcut here, which is the Windows key plus control key plus enter key. Here's a quick example. Settings window. Narrator, toggle switch, on. Narrator home group, show more settings, button, collapsed, show more settings, button, expanded. Narrator window heading level 1, scan, welcome to narrator. This is narrator home, where you can get help, access your settings, and learn about new features. Narrator is a screen reader that describes aloud what's on your screen, so you can use that information to navigate your device. To start or stop narrator, press the Windows logo key plus control plus enter. Here at the very top, click on text size. If you find that the size of the text is too small in any application you use on Windows, you can make the text larger with this handy slider by moving it from left to right. You'll see a preview here at the top. Just adjust it to where you want it. And when you're done with that, click on apply. And you'll see here in this example, in settings, the text is quite a bit bigger. Here on the right, we'll be heading to the hearing section and selecting audio. Let's take a look at flash my screen during audio notifications. This one is for people with a hearing difficulty or for people that keep their PC muted because they don't like the sound of notifications. Let's go to the drop down menu. Other than never, your choices are, no matter the type of notification, flash the title bar of the active window, flash the active window, and flash the entire screen, which is a little much. When I use this, I prefer flash the title bar of the active window. While this feature is simple, it is quite useful. Staying in hearing, let's go to captions. Live captions provides a real-time transcription of audio and turning it into text on your screen. This works great when watching videos, 
during virtual meetings, playing games, or listening to a podcast. It's best not to turn this feature on using the keyboard shortcut listed, which is the Windows key plus Control key plus L key will automatically turn it on and off. You can change the caption style below with five to choose from, and you'll see your change in the theme preview here at the top. We'll now go to the final section here at the bottom called Interaction. Select Speech. Voice Access lets you interact with your computer entirely without a mouse or keyboard. It's built into the operating system, so it can be used while offline. I'll be zooming out so you can see the full screen. When you click the toggle to turn it on, you'll see the voice access bar here at the top. If you plan to use this on a regular basis, use the keyboard shortcut to turn voice access on or off. That shortcut is the Windows key plus Control key plus the S key. Using this, you can open programs on your computer, whether they're Microsoft owned or not, close windows, shut down your PC, and a bunch of other stuff. Here in the upper right corner of the bar, selecting the question mark will let you know what you can do with it. You can view commands, it'll show you an interactive guide, and other stuff. Here's a short example of it in use. You could click on the microphone here in the upper left corner, or use this phrase right here to get it started. Voice access, wake up, open Brave. Close Brave. Open Microsoft Store. Go to Desktop. Also in the Interaction section, let's go to Keyboard. Some you might want to enable include sticky keys. If you have dexterity issues or missing most of your fingers, this will let you do keyboard shortcuts one key at a time. Below that, filter keys, when enabled, allows you to control the sensitivity of the keyboard to ignore or slow down keystrokes that are repeated. Let's click into it. For example, turning on ignore quick keystrokes, slow keys. You can set a wait period before accepting a new keystroke. You would just select it here from the drop down menu. Let's go back. And here in the section below, you can enable the on-screen keyboard, but I find it's better to use the keyboard shortcut, which they have listed right here, the Windows key plus Control key plus zero key. Using the shortcut will bring it up and make it go away. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. What features do you use to improve your overall experience on Windows 11? Let us know about them in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and make sure to click the bell to not miss out on our latest Windows 11 videos and other tech-related stuff here on Brett in Tech.